Welcome back everyone, Alex Anthony here, and today I'm going to show you a little bit more gameplay with my Giratina V-Star deck. going to start off with a little bit of an edit that I made. The very first thing that I did before I played this game was I took the Zigzagoon out of my deck. This is still the basis from a deck that plays really well on an online tournament, and I just never actually removed the Zigzagoon, but I also never really used it either, so I'm replacing it with a Roxanne, which is something I have used before and can be very effective. So everything else in my deck is pretty much the same, so if you've seen my last couple videos, then you know exactly what the deck list is, and if you haven't, go back and check those out. I'll leave a couple of cards right here right now for a, uh, at least one of my last videos so i just decided to hop on the ladder and get a couple games in and as you can see i had a nice little seven game winning streak going at the moment and it's always nice to keep that up but it's always nice to get some nice challenging opponents as well so here we've got a nice beautiful pikachu coin here we lose opponent's turn once again not always bad depending on if we can play turn one chorus like we can right here even though we don't really have the pokemon that we would like we would like to have a comfy in the active right now not a greninja luminian is nice although we do already have the chorus so it's like nah. so we're up against mu v max and all they do is attach and pass and now yes i know this is a game that i'm including but this is a very that is a slow start for mu v max but it's not because it is a slow start for mu v max that i'm including this gameplay it's because i i i'm gonna let the video play out and you'll see why i include this video even though it's against a slow start so we get our colrus we take i'm sorry i should have spoke on that we take the kubo net the capture energy and the giratina v if you remember last time i lost the zone my giratina v star in this exact position and i was not about to do that again energy and quick ball are two things that we can do without we have a lot of energy and we have many ways to get pokemon on the bench so especially with this capture energy opt for the Hisuian heavy ball check our prize card see what we got in there two giratina v we only play three or do we play two i think we should just play two in the deck so uh yeah we need to get one of these for sure <laughs> Put that on the bench. Capture energy onto probably the Giratina? Yeah, because we can scoop up not the Radiant Greninja. And I will get a, a Comfy into play so that I can scoop up not the Greninja and then get a um, Flower Select thing going. We've already... Oh, we have not concealed cards yet. So we'll conceal cards first because then if we get more energy later... Look at this concealed cards to Battle VIP Pass. But the reason why you do conceal cards first is because if you scoop up not the Greninja and then you put it back down on the bench, if I do happen to draw into another energy, I can do concealed cards again. So that's very nice. So I'm going to be... Doing Doing Kubup Nut to get my Radiant Greninja up, put Comfy in the active. I don't know, uh, I Flower Select first. I'm probably going to, I'm going to definitely, not probably, I'm going to definitely use the Battle VIP. I choose the Grass Energy over the Capture because we already have a Capture in our hand. And if I choose, I could do that uh, Radiant Greninja play. So right now, I'm just deciding the sequencing, what exactly I want to do, exactly how many um, resources I'd like to burn on this exact moment. So definitely want to make use of the Battle VIP. Probably get another Comfy out. If I did have it in the deck, this is when I probably would have gotten another Giratina out as well but because i didn't that was all i was able to do with that so i go for the scoop up net on the comfy i'm thinking back right now like do i go for it? i i did and so we go for the boss because i just don't think sableye is going to be super relevant in this matchup the only thing that we can really take out with sableye nicely is oracorio and not every mew vmax list even plays oracorio so now we drop down the radiant greninja get use of the double concealed cards we have lost city in play which is really nice so when we do put off an attack we can lost zone you know one of their mew slash mew vmax if possible so once again my opponent does not have the greatest turn slash game but the thing that i think is cool about this gameplay is it doesn't really matter because even if they had a great turn my next turn is still worth showcasing so this person pokemon catchers twice they get two heads and they bring up both two comfies like right now i'm getting the impression that they're just trying to like reduce their hand size and then they use their supporter for the turn they boss up a another comfy i kind of assume that they would have wanted to put my giratina in the active because it's like not as easy of an attacker and so here they got you know the, the training core i'm sorry not training for the rose tower training course is usually played in mu v max that's why i said that they got the mu v on the bench and they actually got the second energy off for an attack so even though they have a very slow start they actually have a lot more going on than i would have you know wagered that they would have off of just those few cards so this is why on this exact turn like i really do want to make something happen so the first thing that i do is go for flower select and it's almost always the very first thing that i do i have escape rope and i have thornton i think that uh escape rope here is definitely the better play because thornton is just not going to be super relevant in this exact game I'm trying to kind of finish this up quickly. My main goal right here is to just either um, use the escape rope and knock out that Mew V or somehow, some way, get 10 cards in the Lost Zone and Star Requiem this Mew V max. So, and then, you know, I'd have to also have to get my Giratina into the active. So a lot of steps required to do that. At the moment, I think I have uh, five cards in the Lost Zone. So I'm going to Luminian to get a Colrus, which will get me up to seven. And then I would still need somehow to get three more. I have Lost Vacuum, which is nice. I would have to Lost Zone my own items. Let's see what we choose here. We have Escape Rope, Mirage Gate, Scoop Up Net. We probably go for something similar to that. I can imagine that we will... Okay, we didn't want the Escape Rope because we already have one in our hand. So normally I would go for Escape Rope, but in the Giratina V, we already have the one in, you know, in play. I mean V-Star, I'm sorry. 
so I feel like that was pretty standard. We've got the, the one rope is all we really need. We're in the perfect position because our opponent only has the one bench Pokemon, so if we get the opportunity to use it. I have my Radiant Greninja Concealed card still. I'd probably use that first if I had to guess, or do I go Comfy Scoop Up Net? I'm just figuring out ways to get as many um, cards into the Lost Zone. But right now, if I go Comfy Scoop Up Net and then put the next Comfy in here, this will put eight cards in the Lost Zone, and then I do have my Lost Vacuum, and if I Lost Zone my own card, that means I can get up to, in this turn, 10 cards in the Lost Zone, and then if you notice, I did just get a scoop of that as well. So this is uh, actually shaping up to be a pretty crazy turn, and it's definitely the reason why I wanted to include this video. So I'm just sitting here kind of piecing out the play, because I really did not want to mess this up. I realized that I was really close to just sealing this game away, and once again, even though my opponent did not get the greatest start, I still feel like I had a really good chance to... Um, did I not do my own card? I didn't do my own card because I think I wanted to... Um, um, really get what you call it. Oh, that's beautiful. That's exactly beautiful. Here's why I do it because I wanted to keep my own big charm on my uh, Giratina. So I scoop up net this other Comfy, which would have been my retreat normally to get into uh, my Giratina V. But I have a Mirage Gate still, and I only need let's see uh, the two energy for my for my Star Requiem, and I haven't attached for turn yet. So what I do here is I Mirage Gate, get my Grass and my Psychic, and I put the. It doesn't really matter which one I put on here because one of them is going to be for a retreat, and one of them is going to be to power up the Giratina V-Star, and I have the other one, it doesn't matter, you know, in my hand already. So now I'm able to retreat, and as soon as I'm able to retreat, my opponent realized the Star Requiem was inevitable. The 10 cards in the Lost Zone were gotten over just two turns, and that to me was one of the best turns with the Lost Zone that I've had so far. So even though, like, my, my opponent could have had an entire bench full of Genesect, like, that probably would have been one of their, you know, go-to plays. I mean, maybe they could have gone with a, I don't know why I had it. oh, this is what I was doing at the end of the video, I was like, why did I have that up there? <laughs> Um, this is just what their board ended up looking like. They could have had three Genesect out there. Their op optimal attacker would have definitely been Meloetta, because then I couldn't have just come back and hit them with the V-Star on their V-Max, but the way that it all played out could have very easily been that way, even if they had a few Genesect and had a much better board state. So even though it wasn't the greatest turn for them, it was still an awesome turn for me, and that turn could go so good against so many people. And, and I still had the escape rope in my hand, which I never even utilized. So say they were trying to hide something like a Duraludon or a Arceus or something on the bench, escape rope and we could have easily had that KO as well. So I thought that was really cool, and I just wanted to showcase that game for you all today. So we've got a few days to get into Free Card Giveaway 23, so if you haven't entered that, please get in there at, while you can. Just watch the video, see how to enter the giveaway, and how to get more entries into the giveaway as well. Also, jump in the Discord. We're doing a monthly giveaway in here every month as well. Just got to make one post in the monthly giveaway subsection, and then just hop in the general section to either post some content that you've made that you want to share, or just to talk some Pokemon. And as always, if you're looking for some additional Pokemon content, please check out my Poke friends listed down here at the bottom on my page. Kate and Cat Aubrey, R.A. Quinn Plays, Pokemon Father and Son, Oscorp, Eric the Epic, Amy Go, EML Collectibles, The Real Venusaur, Trish and Trev, and Pink Taquito Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all, as always, and we'll see you on the next one.